Hey, this is RJ May, and you're watching Mr. Mario 2011. Hey, what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I am bringing you a little life lesson video, so to speak. I wanted to do this topic, and it's odd because I'm just kind of pulling this out of the blue, and you might be asking, why am I covering this, and what exactly am I covering? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be covering at least my opinion, my advice that I can give to you all on, you know, picking a career, picking out a job that you would enjoy and whatnot, how to really figure out what you want to do. And the way I even stumbled onto this was, I'll tell you all the story, but uh, it was actually from this morning. Now, first off, a little bit of background about me. I am currently, dang, you know, since tests finished up and all, I'm now going to be a senior. I am a senior uh, in college majoring in management information systems. I was previously in computer science and just realized I did not like coding, but I've always enjoyed working with computers and whatnot, and MIS has really been an excellent field. I've really enjoyed it. You know, it's work that I do enjoy. It's work that I'm excelling at. I have an internship. I was able to actually get an internship before any of my friends. So I'm really not trying to brag there, but it's like that, that does hold some ground right there. So it's, it's been fun with that. And it's been nice, you know, discovering something that I really enjoy. And also the hiring rate is pretty good and I can make a good chunk of change off it. So I don't mind that much. It seems to be an all-around, you know, well-rounded job for myself. But the way I came onto this topic was this. This morning, I decided to go ahead, take my car over to the place I normally go to to get my stuff repaired. Now, I didn't have anything serious. I just, you know, I, I had to get some stuff done. I actually found out I had to get my transmission flushed. I had to get uh, my alignment fixed up. And a few other things here. They're just regular maintenance stuff. I mean... It, my car, it's in great condition, but at the same time, as much as I'd like to think of it as a baby, I drive a 2000 Toyota Camry. I love the thing. People might make fun of it for being a family car. Actually, no one really does, but I love the damn thing. Gets me from point A to point B. Uh, it has a great sound system in there, and uh, as I said, you know, I'd love to think of it as a baby, but you know what I thought of this? In perspective, if the car was my younger brother, my car would be graduating from middle school right now. So... Yeah, <laughs> that is how old the car is. I can't think of it as a baby anymore. Anyways, what happened? I took my car over there, and they have a shuttle service that is available. And they just, you know, you go over there. If you need to go back home, you give them your address. They'll drive you back home. They'll pick you up if needed. But what ended up happening was I ended up sitting there, and I sat there for about 10 minutes. I sat there for about 20 minutes. They originally said it was going to take 20 minutes. Then it was taking a little longer. So I waited 30 minutes. I got some soda, got some to eat. I sat there for another probably 20 minutes or so, so we're about 50 minutes in, and I just talked to the guy, I'm like, hey, um, is the shuttle going to be here soon, because you told me 20 minutes, and it's been almost an hour, and the guy's like, oh, okay, uh, let, let me contact the guy, so he call, he gets on the phone, and he's just like, hey, so uh, I need a shuttle service here right now, uh, yeah, I needed to do that thing that you were supposed to do an hour ago, yeah, if you can get here, that'd be great. So it's this older gentleman that comes in, you know, old, tall guy, just a typical old guy, white hair and everything. He comes over, and he's talking to this guy, uh, the guy behind the counter, and the old guy's just like, man, you, you know, I'm going to call him John. I don't want to call him old guy. I'm going to call him John. But John's just like, man, you know, I'm sorry. I just have not had a good day. And the guy behind the counter is just like, well, you, you know, I, I sympathize with you on that, but uh, you were supposed to get this done an hour ago. So uh, we have someone waiting. He needs to be taken back to his house. So um, I'm, I'm just listening in and everything. So John leaves and the guy behind the counter says, hey, you know what? I apologize. I really apologize for the delay, but um, some stuff happened. So the thing that was supposed to be done for you an hour ago should be happening soon. The guy is just going to come back. And I was like, okay, you know what? Cool. And then the guy behind the counter said, and you know what, uh, if he doesn't come back within a few minutes, I'll just have him pay for my gas, and I'll get you into my truck, and I will drive you to your apartment myself. I'll just do it on my own time. And I was like, well, thank you. I, I appreciate it, but I, I think we'll be good. So a few minutes later, the car comes by that's supposed to take me back, a little shuttle. So I go ahead, I hop in, I start talking to the guy. He's like, man, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's just I've, I've had a bad day, and I'm like, hey, you know, it, it's Friday. You don't want to be here again. He said, no, it's 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 not that. It's just, 
we got swamped and then just stuff's been going on so we started talking he wasn't complaining or anything but you know we had a really good talk and that is now this will be the official start to this commentary i guess <laughs> i just had to give you all the background info and by the way this place i continue to go to them because they are a little bit overpriced and they're kind of out of town but service is awesome and they're really honest people and they got a great facility there so that's why i continue to take my car over there but anyways what ends up happening is john and i are talking and he was saying i, I just asked him you know i'm like how long have you been working here for and he said, oh, you know, I've been working here for 23 years, and I've been driving the shuttle since 2006, 2000. Oh, man. You know, when, when you pick a job, when you work in something that you didn't think you were going to be working in, time just flies. You don't, you don't know what happens to it. And then we start talking about it, and he told me originally uh, he actually went to a Christian college in town. He was going to a Christian college. And uh, if, I, if I mess up any terms here, please forgive me because I'm not too familiar with this. But uh, I want to say, you know what, j just for the sake of not messing anything up, he was going to be, you know, w he was trained to be, you know, one of the higher people, one of the higher ups in our church and whatnot. And then he told me, he's just like, well, you know, I, I majored, I got my degree, I was planning on doing that. But then my wife didn't agree with me on that. And this was, you know, once we were married and personally, I don't believe in divorce. So... I decided to go back, I learned something else, and I've been working over here for the past 23 years. And I could tell, you know, it's just, he was hurting. It hurt to see, but we kept talking about it, and he was telling me, he was just completely open, he was an open book with me, but he was telling me all this, and he said, you know, he really wanted to do something else, he couldn't do it, and he said the main thing was, his mom and his wife were more the people that were saying, you need to get a real job. And he told me, he said, you know, I had quote unquote real jobs the whole time I was going to college. I had pretty much worked at every single fast food place you could think of, aside from Wendy's and Taco Bell. Uh, I had worked at several other spots. I had done janitorial work. I worked for the school. And then once I got my degree, I was going to go into the workforce and that happened. So I had to go back to school, learn something else. And here I am right now with my quote unquote real job. And, you know, first off, this is the thing I want to talk about, okay? This this thing, and it's it's not just, I'm saying this on YouTube, it's not just YouTube. Now, first off, I've said before, YouTube is technically a job for me, but I don't count it as a job because I have way too much fun. But I do have day jobs. I actually have two jobs that I love right now. I've had them for the past few years. They're in IT. I do IT on campus. I'm actually going to be leaving those temporarily over the summer because I'm going to be doing an IT internship for a big company. So that's going to be really nice. But, you know, even with all that, with the YouTube thing, with IT, even when I worked at a video game store, I was working retail in high school, people had said, you should get a real job. And that statement itself, it doesn't matter what you're in. That statement itself just pisses me off. Just do the fact that what constitutes as a real job for you? Because I feel like when people say get a real job, they mean a, a real job to them is something that they dread waking up for. They hate going into work for every single day. A real job is a job that they do not enjoy. If they enjoy working, getting paid for it, it's not a real job. But if you go and you put in your nine to five and you hate your life, you hate your existence, you don't like what you're doing, it makes you miserable, that is a quote unquote real job. You know what a real job is to me? A real job to me is something that you get taxed for. It is something that you get money for and you gotta pay money on that. Now, this sentiment applies to anything for me, in my opinion. Now, whatever it will be. I mean, now you have people that do full-time on YouTube. People say that's not a real job. Now, compared to other things, is it as hard as, you know, manual labor, construction? No, it's not. But to me, if you're getting taxed for it, it still counts as a job. Now, granted, you know, jobs are different to everyone else, but you all know what I'm saying here. You know, let me think of something a little more realistic. How about IT? Now, you fix computers, you pretty much kill blue screens, you sit on your ass all day. That's what it looks like, right? So, IT's not a real job, right? That's another thing. <laughs> Most time, if you're working in IT, you're gonna get taxed for what you're doing, everything's official, you're gonna get paid for what you're doing, and also, my look at it with IT is this. If IT did not count as a real job, 
nobody would have to get their computer serviced. Nobody would have failing computers. No one would have, you know, crashed hard drives. Nobody would have viruses. There would be none of that. Nobody would ever have computer issues if IT was not counted as a real job. Same with coders, for example. You know people that just sit on their ass and they type out code on their keyboards all day? That's not a real job, but those people are responsible for this program that I'm using to record this commentary. They're responsible for the program you're using right now, or the application you're using to watch this commentary. <laughs> real job logic, gotta love that. But you know what? I digress. Going back to what John was saying, he was also telling me, you know, he knows at this point he's going to be retiring here in a few years. And he was telling me, you know, the reason why he keeps this job is just due to the fact that really, it's money. It, it it pays decent for what it does, and he has a mortgage to pay off, so that's the deal with what's going on. But he told me about one of his hobbies that he likes to do. And he was telling me that, you know, it's, it's pretty lucrative, and he's going to be starting a business here soon and all that, and he's actually going to be putting some stuff into it. He's done several freelance jobs and whatnot related to it. And he told me what it was, and it's quite lucrative. It's a good career. There's obviously demand for it. He can do it. The thing is, though, he was telling me he still comes into work because his work is stable, and there's days where he's there, and he just gets annoyed because he's like, you know... I could be sitting at home doing what I love and I could be getting paid $100 an hour, but can't really be doing it here, so God do this. And you know what he told me? The funny thing he told me was this. He said with starting up a business, being self-employed, anything like that, when you're starting, he said the key is don't quit your day job. And to a certain degree, I could agree with that. Now, what I said, you know, kind of related to that, I told him and he agreed with me on this. I told him, if you have a job where, you know, you're self-employed, it's your own thing, make sure you get paid first. You have to make sure you pay yourself before there's any profits and whatnot. If there's something you're doing, I mean, sure, yes, you're going to be in the hole a little bit once you're going in, but let's say you're working at something and in the past two years, you've been trying to make this a full-time thing and you've only made a $1,000 profit off it you might need to consider something else, or you might need to change up what you're doing. But John was a real smart guy. He told me, actually, that he has, you know, he, he has some free time here and there between, you know, washing cars and, you know, driving people for services and whatnot, but he said, you know, between his washing cars and whatnot, he's just been doing, you know, some creative things here and there, and he told me he's written, he's written two books full of poems on the job. <laughs> It's just, it's awesome to see someone old like him, you know, planning everything, planning everything ahead and whatnot. But this really got me thinking overall, you know, you're ne it's never too late to start something. But if you're going to do something, something that you want to get paid for, something that you really want to enjoy, make sure you do it right, you know, the first time. Try and find something that you'll love. Now, I hope I don't go back on my word, but you know, who knows? Maybe in like five years, I'll get burned out on IT. I hope that's not the case because honestly, I don't see this happening just due to the fact that IT and just working with computers has been something I've been doing since I was in elementary school. These have been most of the jobs I've had. I've had freelance IT jobs. I've been doing IT for the university. Hell, even when I was working at the game store that I was working at, I was pretty much the IT guy without the title of the IT guy because I was one of the people who knew what they were doing when it came to computer programs, when it came to diagnosing issues and whatnot, and when it came to, you know, keeping everything safe. Now, here's the beautiful thing about, you know, where we live right now in 2014. We are at the point where we can pretty much take any profession, anything that we love, and at least monetize it at minimum as a paid hobby. This YouTube thing, I count it as a paid hobby. That, that is going to be my appropriate term for it now. Because, as I said, you know, it's not just something I do in my free time because I spend a decent amount of time on it, but I enjoy doing it. And it's not, I don't like considering it a job even though it is, but, you know, a paid hobby, that's a perfect name for it. And if you can at least make a paid hobby out of something you love doing, I'd recommend that. And also, when you have free time, just go on to Google. Just learn new things. Do whatever you could to increase your intelligence. Just for fun, you have to learn to learn for fun. One example of this was recently, I want to say a few months ago, I want to learn more about the Tor network, about anonymity, and about, you know, 
just how deep net works, things like that. These are all things you can Google. So what did I do? That night I got onto my computer, I did a crash course and I just read about Tor and DeepNet and everything else, you know, how all this encryption worked for about an hour or two. And my knowledge just went through the roof compared to what I knew, you know, two hours prior to that. But you really have to be self-driven with that as well. And if that is something you could train yourself to do, it is such a lifelong skill and such a great skill that you can have that no one will take away. Another thing I want to say about this day and age where if you're trying to say, you know, I can't do it or whatnot, not everyone will succeed, but I'll put it like this. We now live in a time where there was a guy who was able to take Bitcoin, which is an electronic currency that he got from Bitcoin mining online, and he walked into a dealership and purchased an electric car with money that he got online. <laughs> Man, I love the future. I gotta say I love it, but I just wanted to put this out there, just kind of make this commentary, and if it kind of got a little convoluted here and there, I apologize, but what happened was I actually t did this commentary over the course of a few hours, because while I was in the middle of the commentary, John actually came over to pick me up, so everything seems to be going well with that, and the car seems to be in work and order, but you know, that's my advice. You know, if you pick a career, make sure you're going to pick something that you love doing because there's people I know that are in careers, they're in jobs that they hate and they can change it, but they just don't want to change it. I know one person, for example, I won't single anyone out, but I know one person where he was an engineer and now he switched over to another major. And I know, I know for a fact he wanted to do, he, he would have loved to do something in art and science, something related to art, but I know his dad was the one who said no. Even with my major, for example, I am so happy I was able to pick something that I love doing and something that pays well at the same time. Because I remember when I switched from computer science to management information systems, my dad was a little bit disappointed, but I remember at the end, the end, he said, you know what, Danny, just do whatever you want to, as long as it, the money is not the issue, okay? Money is not the issue, as long as it makes you happy. And you know what, I have to say, I agree with that, but I know with my dad, I'm not saying he's money hungry or anything, but I know with my dad, <laughs> he was saying that because I was going from computer science to management information systems. If I went from doing computer science to something like poetry or art education or something, he would not have been happy. <laughs> because let's just be real here, there is a huge g gap in pay between the two. But make sure you do something where you're happy in it, because... Another word of advice, and I heard this, I, I got told this in a moment where I really needed to hear it. And this might help some of you all out. But a friend of mine, I talked with their dad, and their dad told me, you can learn to excel at something, you can learn to be the greatest at something. Take any skill, you can learn to, to you know, excel and be real good at it. And be hireable with it. But if you hate it from the beginning, you will never learn to love it. If you learn to be good at something that you hate, you will never learn to love it. You'll just continue to hate it. If you learn to be good at something that you already love, then it's not going to feel like you're working at all once you are in the working field. That's just how it works. <laughs> Saying work too many times there. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone. <laughs>